Oh, Ooh, you ow. just took a chunk. I did. <laughs> you were ju you just took a chunk. Did I really? It's not bad, but there's definitely like a you could do like a vanilla ice kind of or a the the riff raff. Okay, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, right, yeah, one second. <laughs> Here, you're getting so close. He's gonna do it again. Are we rolling on everything? As always, this podcast is sponsored by the best energy drink in the entire world, mm. Accelerator, baby. That's right. They are the most delicious energy drinks out on the market right now. I'm rocking Peach Paradise today. And as always, we've got zero sugar per can. With that, it sustains energy, enhanced focus, accelerated metabolism. You know what, baby? I also heard that... This got rid of my. This got rid of my. Uh, my infection in my tooth. Oh, wait, other, oh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah, okay. I went to the doctor and they said it, it went away. It accelerated. And I, it got yeah, it and I had an accelerator right before that too. Hmm. So you know, it really does cure everything. I also heard it cures. It cured uh, Matt's uh, hepatitis. Not hepatitis. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, his psoriasis. <laughs> yeah, uh, Matt took one little sip the other episode. <laughs> gone. <laughs> go, go, what, gone. Whatever I just said. Gone. It's just it really cures everything. It cures hangovers. Magic it cu in a can. It cures hunger. That's right. It cures thirst. It's a great pick me up if you you know. If it's in the middle of the day, you're feeling a little bit low energy, just crack one of these puppies or before a workout, whenever you f you need that acceleration. I've, I've been honestly replacing these with my alcohol drinking too. When I want to get crazy, I went to the party two nights ago, wanted mm -hmm. to get crazy. I drank a whole accelerator and I was off the charts. Okay. Off the charts. My man, a little yeah. shotgun. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, of course, if you guys want to be like us, be like Zanny Heath on Filter. I mean, drink crazy. The best energy drink in the entire world. You're going to go to Amazon. You'll find it all there. You're going to get a $5 off when you click the link in our description below and it's going to be it's going to be code five save now and it runs until March 11th that's right baby so act now while you can save that money and just drink the best exactly let's get back to the episode baby how you doing I'm good I'm good I'm, good. I, I'm not gonna lie I didn't wake up in the best mood I just okay. woke up I was like I don't want to get out of bed today just right. like real down it happens but yeah we're in a new house obviously like I'm super happy we're excited to be there but for some reason I'm just kind of waking up like a little cranky and i don't know why because it, is it because there's a lot to do on the to-do list yeah it's just we're just overwhelmed yeah we've, it's been non-stop we haven't really it's sun up to sundown we're doing shit around the house yeah. and i think i'm going to bed like extremely tired and i still no matter how much sleep i get i feel like i'm not well rested so i'm waking up like i really just want to go back to bed right now and then once yeah. i'm up and we have like coffee and everything i'm like okay getting a little bit better that's um, good so for me i just feel like and I feel like you guys probably feel this too. I feel like someone's out to get me. How so? Just certain times. I don't know. I just feel like somebody is sitting there waiting to get me. I've been just a lot more paranoid Waiting to lately. end me. I don't know. Like it's, it's like, the, it's a, um. Impending doom feeling. Yeah. I have, I have a similar fear lately where I feel like I'm about to get hit by a car or something is about Matt. to like explode around and just me. knowing that car accidents happen just so like frequently. Mm -hmm. I've been thinking a lot about that too. I'll just be driving. And I, every time I pass an intersection, I tighten my whole body and I just like, I pretty much just wait for somebody just like, like almost like crossing like railroad me. tracks. Like you look yeah. for a train, but you're still like not I'm, sure if I'm a train's so coming. Sorry. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. And then also because of that weird little tiny fender bender that I happened uh, over seven months ago, there, my insurance like went up on my car, yeah. like too much where I still need to call them and figure out what's going on because she never even like did a counterclaim or yeah. anything, but I've been so paranoid driving. I'm like, I cannot be hit by anybody. Like when, when mm. it comes to, when it comes to that situation, when you, when you uh, get into a car accident and you both decide to take care of it, like just without calling, uh, calling in and just like get it fixed, you pay him. Is that considered like fraud or not fraud? No. But like, no, is that, that that's legal, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought for some reason I thought it was illegal. It's just it was something like taboo if you did it. Because or, you I mean, don't want to get the insurance companies involved because it will affect your monthly. Exactly. Payments. But if the insurance companies found out that you did that, isn't that like would that be bad? No. No, I don't it, think so. If somebody got hurt. If someone and you got were hurt, paying them off. Yeah. That's where I feel like. Yeah. No, but there's people that are just like that get into car accidents and everybody's fine. It's just like a small fan, and they're just like, nope, we got to tell the insurance. It's like, why would you do that? You're gonna. You're gonna make everybody. The thing is, both people like don't want to do it because one, it's a it's a mark on your car. So like, if you do a Carfax, it shows that you've been in an accident. Yeah, it's gonna lower the value. If it's an easy repair, that's just like a little tiny dent. Like you would just be like, here's a couple hundred bucks, go get the dent removed. Do you think the people that 
do want to put it through insurance, is that because they're just like pissed off at them, like for hitting them, for ruining their day? It's mostly, I think, if it's like a major accident. Chris. No, no, I under if there's a major accident, you you have to put it through insurance. There's, you can't like yeah. beat around because it, that's just like over thirty thousand dollars worth of damage on the car if it's like a big accident yeah. like that. So I, I get that, but. But if your rate goes up so much, you're like, and you calculate how much the rate went up, you're like, well, I should have just paid for the little fender Yeah, even though somebody hit you, your insurance is going to go up. Exactly, which is why I would never, I would just. Right. Yeah. It Mm. all depends on the the scenario. Complicated. Kind of like how that guy felt when I just Mm. blacked out, remember? That was why. I, I feel, to this day, I feel so bad for him. Just, he probably felt so safe on the road and now he's just like me. Yeah. Just constantly watching for somebody to just veer into them. Veer right into them. Just ruin his whole day. Wait, when did this it's happen? A, it's a sm- it's a small thing of trauma. What? You hit a guy? Yeah, I did I, you do you rem- do you not remember this? I don't remember. Remember when I was like, guys, I literally I just like blacked out and I just swerved right into this guy. It, <laughs> oh. But like I wasn't like ah and I just I I just genuinely just I my mind just wasn't on anymore and I just Oh. <laughs> I just crashed right into it. This is the one where I was on my way to the doctor for my anxiety. Oh, I, so, <laughs> was this with your Tesla? Yes. Oh boy. Yes. Remember we're like, oh, you should pull up the footage. But you know, the, the sentry camera just was not on that day. Uh. That camera just like, there's half the time it just doesn't want to turn on. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. It should be on at all times just in case. Yeah. Do they, is it like a membership you have to pay for to like make sure it's recording? Um, I think it all depends on like maybe the battery on your car oh. or something. I mean, I don't think my battery's like was low full. power mode. It was like low power <laughs> mode or something. I have I, a phone percentage question I wanted to ask you guys. Are you guys, uh, do you like seeing the number percentage? I of have how number. Much you always, have number? Always. What's the other option? No, no number. Nobody. No, I want to see a oh, number. Oh no, give me yeah. the number. See, the number makes me go too squirrely. I'd rather like eyeball it. So I'm like, okay, I'm good. But if you're giving me the digit and then seeing it go down all the time. No, I need to see exact. That mess- so so it sounds me. like you probably look at the bar when it's halfway full, you just charge it again. I don't Because there's cause, no way you get, like, how, what if Because, I don't know, my phone has never died on me in my life, but when I'm going out, I'm always thinking it's, like, gonna your die. Your phone has never died on you in your life. No, not, not in my life. Oh, okay. But I guess not in the past five years. You should turn off your phone sometimes. So I'm just gonna go out and party until but, it dies? No, think about it. Your device being on. For five years. For it's fi- pretty crazy. I mean, I've turned it off sometimes. Okay. If it's been acting weird. Oh, okay, good. Do a little I, hard reset. But sometimes if it's down to 20%, I'm not taking any more photos. I'm not looking at TikTok for the rest of the day. Like if I'm out and about and I know I'm not uh-huh. going to No, I run it. that like my, yeah. gas, my gas tank. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, keep going until keep it's- Keep going. Push I take it. Every, yeah. <laughs> okay, maybe I should go to the numbers then. We pay- it makes you feel alive because you can be so precise. We pay way too much money for those phones- to not let it's it like, run to its last Like, like yeah. new cars, they give you how many miles until empty. It's, it's fun to see that. Because sometimes I'll look at my tank and be like, damn, I'm about to run out right now. And then it's like, you've got 50 miles. I, can, I was like, I can get to Zane's house 10 more times. Keith, I love a challenge. Yeah, I, me I've too. let my car completely run out of gas three times in my life. I've never oh, done I've three never. times. That's bad. Oh, three Zane, times. That's bad. That's bad, I've right? Never ran we're out of gas. Like, I was on my way home. And I, dude, <laughs> no. I have like two more turns left. And I'm like, no. Nah! What happens? I've it never run out of gas. Put, does it make a sound? Oh. Does it go like puff, puff? Like a cartoon. Like, No, it just, it just, it just dies like. Mm. Oh my gosh, that's really. And cool. are you? Does the gauge? Because I've heard that like even if you get down to zero miles, you can still drive like another twenty five. Oh, easily. But yes. does the Been gauge there. go like to bonus mode? Does it keep going or <laughs> it does goes it really below the mod? I ran that shit to the last drop. <laughs> to the last drop. There should be like an alarm that goes off once it runs out that says like you're an idiot. You're yeah, an idiot. Yeah, like, it was it was my G wagon too, heavy ass car sitting were, on it. Were you driving home? Because what I was, was driving happen? home. But then if it was you'd that have to go dead, get gas in the morning and haul up a gas tank or like yeah, I was. I mean, back then I was like I'm lazy now, but I was real. Just wait till last minute, wait till the last second, every single time. Are you guys um, like fill up like half a tank at a time, or do you just go get full? Oh. <laughs> I no, I'm guilty. I do half a tank because I always think I'm going to find a better deal somewhere else. Or I think like maybe the economy is going to get really great like next week. And, and the next couple like, miles. Yeah. Or sometimes I know gas is cheaper on this side of the hill compared to being in the thick of yeah. West Hollywood. So I'm like, yeah. I'll wait till I'm in the valley. 
Because I'm like, I don't need to fill it yeah, up. Yeah, ba- and back then all the time too, like especially with the work I was working, I had to drive to Miami all the time. Uh-huh. And I only had just so much money to be. So I would, I would, only, I would always fill it up like quarter, half. And that sucked because I was in my Mitsubishi Galant. My whistle wheezy. And that thing guzzled my gas. I, and it, dude, gas was expensive. And fl- I was paying like that over 100 bucks. That car was the definition of a hoopty. You remember that car? I can't forget the side view mirror hanging off. What kind of car? It's a Mitsubishi Galant. (laughs) Oh, I remember those. Yeah. I had like a light, light, light gray one with the line in the middle. Like it looked, it looked. Oh shit. That's a a boat. Matt, (laughs) you know how much I paid for my first car? Mm, less than five thousand dollars. Three thousand dollars for my first car. You could tell me 20 bucks and I wouldn't believe it. Thinking that. I was never going to have a problem with it. Zane, mine was 2800 <laughs> <laughs> My transmission went out the first five months. <gasps> the first five months. Mm-hmm. Transmission. You know, you know how much a tra- your transmission is? Oh, uh, Like fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000? Like $4,000. Oh, boy. Guess what? It, it was a totaled car. So <laughs> it, was, it was legally a totaled car. Did so not you- ask for the Carfax? Cash for clunker. <laughs> yeah. Just no, get that I, yeah, 500 I, I didn't get it because I didn't want to spend money on somebody checking up on my car to see if it was worth it. I, but it also had this like giant like green exhaust tip hanging off the back of it. Gr- green? Mine? Yes. How do you like remember a, this? Because I remember looking at it and I was like, that looks like a Flanagan's cup. Oh, yes. Hanging yes. off the back of your car. <laughs> yeah. It was so big and disgusting. And it just, it was one of those that was like, <laughs> <laughs> like the weed eater cars. Man. Dude, I really, I started from the bottom. That That was like. Did that, you pay for it for yourself, or was your Bubba like? No, no, I, no. Bubba? I saved up. I saved up and paid what? for it. <laughs> I'm calling it my Bubba. Yeah, that was. Or was your like Bubba, Bubba like? Was I no, I saved up everything, dude. I paid for everything. The only time my parents like spent, like gave me money, was like in middle school for like lunch money. I, I like they'd give me quarters from their quarter bowl, and then I would just use that to like buy lunch from the vending machine. That was like my lunch. Mm. Um, and then as soon as I got a job when I was like 15, I paid. I paid for everything. Oh wow. I have yeah. a dumb question, and I've never Googled it, and I don't think I've ever asked this. When someone says that they bought a house in full in cash, are they paying with like no, no, actual no. fucking? No. Okay, good. Yeah, it cash just means, means you wired that, the money. Yeah. Like you're not. Okay. You're it's not very having, confusing though. Like, what's the? They why say you say they that? say that. I think it's because like traditional, like tradi- like traditionally, like yeah. we're paying in cash. You give them cash, but now it's just like a term that like you're paying it's it like all you at once. You paid it in full. I just when you put cash involved. That like it goes Beyonce and Jay Z just bought a billion dollar home in Malibu in cash. cash. I'm like, are they all going to the bank and like, <laughs> what's this meeting? Is there briefcases no, just it's, stacked? Okay, it, it's just, I th- it's just like they got all the money right now. Yeah, like you're paying me in cash. I'm getting the whole. There's no monthly payments. I'm just getting it all. I have it. I could spend it right now. Yeah, if I wanted to. You know how much cash there? Like how much money there is in the U S. and how much of that's in actual cash? It's literally. Wait. I think it's like. Less than 5% is actual cash. Wait, Cause, what? Because you think that like all the money that you have, that there's like an actual bill for it somewhere. Somewhere, yeah. There's no. There's not. It's, it's basically, all digital. It's all so digital. If everybody would decide that they wanted to pull out- ca- it, The economy okay. would collapse. It would, it would collapse. Oh. It's pretty-, pretty hey guys, should, we do, should we do like a little challenge? Between 1% to 5% is actual physical cash. That's, that's scary. Yeah. Has everyone checked their unclaimed checks? Oh yeah! Oh, just got my. I found Heath, that was that wait, was genius. Unclaimed property. The, yeah, yeah. We did that like, a couple of years ago. I just did Zane's the other day. I looked him up. He's got four thousand dollars. I couldn't believe you could it. Buy another Mitsubishi. You could buy another Mitsubishi. Exactly. Wow. And the transmission. Oh. And the transmission. I, and this was from years. Like I, what was it from? Because I saw like my stepmom's name on there from like. A, yeah, it, um, the one that I found for myself was from our first apartment out here. You had one, I think, from there as well. Yeah. Uh, this is a new we recently you just looked up there was a four thousand one dollar for you. Yes, because when Yesterday we did this a couple years ago. years ago, there wasn't one, right? Mm. Some of them you can't claim yet until it hits a certain time. So like I have three that are waiting for me, but I can't add to cart basically until like another like three months or so. Are these tight ty- because you have to type in like your address or like the residency of your time? Like all I did was search my name and then like his I, a, a lot of his big ones were under his business name. So I searched his business, and uh, mine was under my business. Is this the state of California or yeah. national unclaimed property? It's like the um, something California.gov. Can, can yeah. you actually look it up for the people listening so they can 
search it up. You can do unclaimed just, property. Unclaimed what? property in their state. They Google it. One for Florida was <laughs> Florida Treasure Hunt. Got it. SCO.ca.gov. I um, had I had what forty eight dollars. Yeah, you do. There you Ooh, go. Lunch is on dude. me. Come uh-huh. on. But what is the unclaimed property? It was like you had money in like a different bank account that was just sitting so there. Matt, I I really don't because it was all it said was an address and an amount. Mine was from uh, State Farm. Okay. I think so. Basically, like if you have like your insurance or whatever, and they cut you a check back if you overpaid or some sort of like debit back to you, and you don't claim it, they legally like can't take your money, and they'll hold it for however many years if you go call them and like get it sent to you. But once it hits like a certain threshold, they send it off to California government or whatever, and then you can get it from them. Got it. But you have to basically like fill out this form. Sign it and then mail it in. My my dad was freaking out when. Oh, you I showed said, him. Yeah, I found some for his dad he, too. He was looking at all my family members. He's like, "What's your brother's name? Like, what's your uh, <laughs> what's your what's brother's you, name? No, what's your step? <laughs> what's your stepmom's name?" He just looked up everybody. Everybody was just getting all the. Like, yeah. my, my dad that's had like a hundred and thirty seven bucks. Pro- you had to go through like hundred thirty seven Ahmeds too. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> it's crazy. There, there's a there's a Ali Hijazi in Miami, but it wasn't oh, my that brother. Wasn't your brother. Oh, that's wow. crazy. Ali Hijazi. Oh, your last name is Ahmed. I'm so sorry. What? what? Hijazi. <laughs> I know, I that's, it's, my, it's my middle name, though. Oh, okay. Is yeah. your dad Ahmed? Dad's yeah. first name. Okay. okay. Dad's yeah, first name is Ahmed. That's what I was thinking. I don't know. I'm going to start a business just going around and claiming everybody's and taking like a nice 10%. Yeah. You find like some wealthy Ooh. guy who's just like, hey. oh, damn. But Man, you, does- you found I had a $1. <laughs> $1.2 million out in Oklahoma. But it won't look too good for your business because you're not telling them exactly what you're doing. But you're, but you're asking for their ID. You're asking for their social security number. You're it's going to look a little unethical scammy. Unethical life hack. You're a treasure hunter. A vigilante. That's right. For mm. the people. <laughs> Run that intro. We have not done the oh, intro. Oh, the intro. Uh. <laughs> All right. It's coffee tall, baby. Ooh, it's coffee tall, baby. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> it's coffee tall. Million dollars. Is it playing? Damn. That's, Is it done? That has to be a record. I should put my headset on. Jordan, how long on. are we recording? 17 wow. minute intro, New baby. New record. Nice. High score. Hey, you know what that means? That means it was a good start. It was That's a good right. run. You see the lady that just donated a billion dollars? We, yes. we didn't introduce ourselves. Oh, oh, I'm so excited. Okay. I'm Zane. I'm Heath. I'm Matt. I'm Mariah. And we're unfiltered. Continue, Heath. What were you oh, doing? yeah. <laughs> the lady just donated a billion dollars. Damn right. How Insane. Much? She's a billionaire, right? Well, I guess her <laughs> husband died is what I heard. And she came into the money and was like, Give it away. How how much billion is she worth? It has to be in the double digit billion. If you're I, I think it. she donated exactly one billion dollars. She is good for her. So cute. He, she has a hundred billion dollars. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's just it's like oh sure. Um, she's so cute. Ninety three years old, right? She's a widow. What it, what is she like? So she donated it um for uh to pay off like tuition for Bronx Medical School that's for the really Albert cool. Einstein College wow. of Medicine, and that's I mean that's great if it's a college of medicine yeah. too because those kids are the ones who are going to become doctors and. The loans that they have to be paying off for the rest of their lives is, yeah. I mean, that's crazy, man. especially when you're a person who's going out to save lives, to help people. Yeah, that's crazy. Good. good for her. That's really cool. It's going to be a nice tax write-off for her. Oh, she, yeah. <laughs> she goes, can we write that one off a billion? How, how we do it? They're like, we've never had this type of donation before. They give her a statue. You are like, <laughs> people are going to be getting tattoos of her and everything. That's an insane that's don- like, a donation amount. Like, think about it. Do you think, though, I, I saw the video of her, like, announcing it. The kids going into that assembly, they knew that there was going to be a big surprise. Because some of those, a lot of those kids had their phones mm. out. And kids, I mean students, college I heard students. Wait, they don't Here we go. Here we go. And especially <laughs> a school like that, they knew it was going to be a lot of money. Ooh, uh-huh. they, wouldn't, they wouldn't gather all of them in a, in a room like that. Imagine you just graduated the year before, though. <laughs> and you're like, she no, did I'd what? She's pa- <laughs> you know what I would do? I would get, like, to the, the two years after. the two, Or, yeah, the two years after. Just... Just so they don't feel left out. Yeah, 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 something. A billion divided by 60, 60 grand? Yeah. How many people she paid for? Oh my God, it's going to be so much. 16,000 16, students. So how many students do you think go to the Bronx University? What? But Wait. also that's $60,000 a, ye- a year yeah. over four years. So then you have to divide that by four. So there, she's pretty much covering one year one year for every student? I think it's 1,600. No, that's wrong. Wow. Wait, there's 8,300 students. 
Oh! But this is the Albert Hold Einstein on. School of Medicine, oh, though, sorry. so it's only a certain... Albert. Okay, don't okay. know. Okay. <laughs> um, 737 MD students, 209 PhD students. Okay, so she's she's taking care of a lot of she's people. Taking, They're yeah, covered. She, yeah. Room and wow. board. Mm. That's awesome. They Very should, they good. They got to name like a highway after her or something. <laughs> 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 or a school. A school. I want like a whole... <laughs> a school would make more sense. I want a, a whole wing. <laughs> you know? They do that. I want These colleges. Mm. They're they're gonna make the biggest building under her, and you know what? This work like I I would too if I get my name on the top of the building. Hopefully that's it. what our husband like wanted. <laughs> He's like, you did what? <laughs> I saved that money for you. <laughs> she paid that money just to get one of her grandkids into the school. He's yeah. just an idiot. <laughs> just somehow somehow she's dummy. gonna get canceled this year for something stupid. People are already <laughs> complaining. Uh. Like, you know, about what? About her donating? That, yeah, that's cool. it's just somebody. If, if she it, did it to your school, you'd be happy. Yeah. Wait, is it because it's to us like a prestige? Like a, people a, think a you big, could give it to other, other causes. There's always just something. No matter how much you give or what you give to, yeah. people are going to say something. It's education. Yeah. Yeah. Could it be educational? It would be very <laughs> educational. <laughs> Before we continue, we want to give a big thank you to our sponsor of this podcast, SeatGeek. We got so many hot festivals coming up. We got concerts. We got games. We got it all. All on SeatGeek, baby. That's right. And with over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app out there. Like I said, there's so much going on. They got more than 70,000 events every single day on SeatGeek, including concerts, sports, festivals, and much, much more. That's right, baby. We got artists like Drake, the Jonas Brothers, Post Malone, the 1975. They're all on tour right now, and you do not want to miss it. And as you guys know, SeatGeek is great. They put all the tickets across the web in one place just to make sure you are getting the best deal possible. That's right. And each ticket is rated on a scale of 1 to 10. So look for green dots. Green means it's a good deal, and red means it's uh, not the best deal. <laughs> and every ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee. Guarantee. And SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps. Settle down, settle down. Settle we down. We got you covered. All you have to do is use code unfiltered and you're going to get 20% off tickets at SeatGeek. Yes, that's $20 off your first purchase with promo code unfiltered. Make sure to click the link in our description box below to download the app today. Thank you so much, SeatGeek, for sponsoring this podcast and sending us to all of the events. Did you guys see the... Uh, the the Willy Wonka factory, the pop up. Yes, in, huh? in Glasgow, in in Glasgow, 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 Scotland. I cannot believe Wait, what? people thought that was. They were advertising that they were uh, <laughs> having this Willy Wonka experience. You know how there's like the Vincent yeah, Van Gogh yeah. thing, these little like pop up exhibits that you can go. And they were heavily advertising that you it, take your kids to this place full of a magical land of candy, <laughs> chocolate, and wonder straight out of the Willy Wonka movie. Okay. And it was about 34 pounds. A ticket. Okay. And these people get <laughs> to this exhibit. Hey, look at this. Bubba. <laughs> no. This is, you can't make this up. It is straight there, out of like Fire Festival. There were children crying. No, they just Amazon anything that yeah. they could. And or it looks like they found things in a dumpster and then they got the idea. Hey, this kind of <laughs> looks like a Willy Wonka. Yeah, they were like, should we just do a whole. They found one lo like giant lollipop. They were like. Oh, yeah. We can make this yeah, work. Yeah, like it could have been from like props from a play at a school in the back dumpster. And they just got the idea like, what well, can we, we do with this? We could set something up for the kids. Look at this. <laughs> no, like not even any tablecloths on the table. That's really funny. What's crazy to me is that ever since Fire Festival... People think they could just do yeah. whatever they want. It really set this like... Because I can't think of anything before Fire Festival that really... Where you paid so much money, and this is obviously just 34 pounds, but... People just paid so much money to get this experience, and it was just a complete bust. And I wonder how they even promoted this. Like, they, what was the fancy the website? You go, a, you tell AI, make me a website that, <laughs> that looks like a crack house. Look Remember, at this. That looks like a crack. Like, you just walked That's into a trap bad. house and you just got these people. Okay, hear up. me out. Hear me out. Wouldn't be that bad, but this this place looks like it's, it's too big. fifty thousand square feet. Right. If it was one room, all those decorations in one yeah. room. Would have looked pretty if good. If this was yeah. in a house, it would be unbelievable. Right. But it's this huge warehouse and they didn't fill the space. They just put the props I in. I think they underestimated the venue of what they booked and they were like, <laughs> we are screwed. And Wait. guess what? Apparently there wasn't even any chocolate there. They no. only got like a cup of lemonade and like one jelly bean. No. <laughs> Did you and, see the cups of water and, and on a table? I think, yeah, that was like the lemonade. Matt, imagine they got, you know the tractor oh, scene? The lemonade stand. <laughs> 
No. Ma- you guys remember the tractor scene where they're all in this machine? Imagine yeah. they just brought like a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and they made this like makeshift like green screen where they're just like, well, look. We're- <laughs> <laughs> oh. and, then, and apparently the actors that were there were given like AI generated scripts that made no sense and there was this one there's this one clip where they like have this guy who's dressed up as Willy Wonka and he goes now I present to you he's the kids looking in a mirror and this guy comes out from behind it and he has this like you know like Jabberwocky mask on and he's like he's from the unknown and the kids start crying someone commented and said this looks like it's straight out of a it's always sunny in Philadelphia <laughs> yeah. episode that like, is, yes. that's really good. This is look at they that. They couldn't even fill the water cups up. <laughs> look at the water. Such good inspo though for like a whole episode like that. Oh yeah. Just because there's been so many. It's like the and it's like oh, what did Ace Family do? Didn't they make like a oh, whole? Oh, it's, yeah. it's like that. It's just they like I kind of want to make one just like this, but it's but it's for laughs. Like please come <laughs> on in. <laughs> it's this just horrible experience. You, yeah, apparently the cops got called and everyone's getting a refund for it. And you know, that's what I'll tell the people. If you see that there's some cool like exhibit or event coming to your town, do your research before you go to it. Because even, I mean, this is really bad, but some of those places lately, they're not that great. They're there to take your money. I don't trust any like pop-up event like that. Like pop-up fairs, no. Oh, pop-up rides, them. Absolutely not. Tell yeah. me that's not the goodie bag of candy each kid got. <laughs> yes, they got like one <laughs> jelly bean. That's not real. <laughs> They're just edibles. The that's kids are just... They're high thinking it really is the coolest place. That's why this employee's blurred out because they're giving the kids edibles. <laughs> Look at that. I would quit on this spot. Like if I, if, even if I showed up for work and I'm like, this is what it is. I'd be like, I'm, I'm so sorry, folks. Like I can't do it. I can't do this. I can't even take your money. Like <laughs> I'm walking out right with you. I just wish that this went viral. Like as it was happening, just so like they could fly out uh, Timothy Timothy Chalamet into here and just kind of give everybody a good experience. Put a smile pounds. on kids' faces. This looks like complete ass, but hey, look, we have Timmy Chalamet. Or even get the old guy from the first movie. Just have him walk dead. through. Gene, oh, I think oh, Gene Wilder is past. Yeah. Or, or bring his spirit. I don't know. Just no, no, something. No, no, no. Just something. I think South Park should do an episode. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. That's so I'm sure funny. they will. Oh, my God. Uh, speaking of South Park, we saw a whole episode. Crazy a whole episode that they were making like a parody of just Logan Paul's prime drink. Oh yeah. It oh. was the whole episode. They called it like a uh, cred. Like, cred, but the, the, the bottle the ju- looked just exactly, like prime yeah. and everything. And bro, I would have felt so good as a founder of a brand. If they made a whole South Park episode about it, I it was tired yeah. and it, it didn't even make it, it look that bad. Like it didn't make prime look bad at all. It was just like, it was Did just, they call him Logan Paul in it? No, no, no. Logan Paul's name wasn't mentioned or anything. It was just, it's just his. Those. It was just his drink. Oh, good. But, 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 dude, I I remember watching. I was like, damn, that that's so sick. Pretty cool. You made it. If you're on South Park, you made it. Yeah. Uh, it, what, what does the drink do? Is it make the kids like act crazy or there's, the, I don't think there's anything in the drink that makes them crazy. It's just, everybody just feels so left out if they don't have a, a cred on them. Yeah. So all the kids who have cred in their pocket or like on the, <laughs> uh, in their net, you know, the back net with a net on the side, they'd have it sitting in there. It's like, bro, where's your cred? He's like, and then the, the kids would be just be like, oh, I just left mine at home. He's like, oh, we don't want to hang out with you. And they'll all like turn away and rock away if they don't have like cred on them. And then obviously the new flavor comes out and like one kid has a new flavor. And I was like, why'd you get the flavor? Like, how'd you get that? <laughs> Damn. It's a good name. SNL. Did you guys see the last one? With Shane Gillis? Yeah. Yeah. Do you like Shane Gillis? Uh I don't mind. I don't mind he's, Shane Gillis. He's so, I, he's so funny. I like listening to him on podcasts sometimes. I think he like dances the line really, really well he's, with stuff. He's yeah. pushed it, but like he um I don't mind. what I like about him is the way he just talks. Like just him having a conversation, even if he's not trying to say anything funny, his facial expressions and his timing with just the things that he says are so good that you're like laughing at the way he talks mostly, but then like he'll throw in like a joke or something it, with it. It just feels like you're talking to him one on one when he whenever he's on stage. Like it, it really feels like you're getting that experience of just. Like and he's being a really good storyteller. Oh yeah. yeah, absolutely. He's had a wild story too. He used to be like a, a marine as well, and then he got was. It. Yeah, I think he was in the marine or. What's he, the other one? He was like, oh my God. Is that him? Yeah, yeah. that's him. That's wow. insane. Yeah, oh, he went to West Point. Yeah, and I, I think did. he played on the football team at West Point. I think, that's sorry what if I'm, it was. I'm wrong. That's what it was. Uh, yeah. 
And he got on SNL though, and then they found like him. Uh, I don't know if it was tweets or him to, uh, using they some found a slurs podcast to yeah. him talking about it. But I think that's like so badass that you went from like truly getting canceled, but and then you got to go back to the show that you got, got canceled, canceled all, all yeah. from, and you got to host. Especially because like they had the highest ratings they've had in like fifteen years. Was this episode? Wait, really? Uh huh. How many lives does this guy live? <laughs> oh, he's he's pretty he fast. all. In his trumpet, Damn. I wish like though his Trump impression is so, so fucking good. good. It's like the most accurate. Like, like, I if he was got on SNL, he would have been like killing it. Before we continue, we want to give a big thank you to our next sponsor of this podcast, Better Help. Let me ask you something. What's the first thing you'd do if you had an extra hour of your day? Huh? Would you go for a run? Take a nap? Maybe read a book. I know you wouldn't. Show up for a friend. You know, a lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. The question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and what makes it a priority. And what should you make a priority? Therapy, baby. And that's why we got BetterHelp. And if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, and it's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. And it's super simple. You're going to fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge, baby. Plus, you're going to do it all from the comfort of your own home. You don't mm. have to go anywhere. You don't have to sit in traffic, spend mm. any gas money, go in mm -mm. any waiting rooms. Mm -mm. Baby, just... Stay in bed, sit on the couch, just feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Zane and Heath today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Zane and Heath. Thank you, BetterHelp, for sponsoring today's episode. And thank you for taking care of our hearts and our mind. I saw something, uh, I saw, I saw something on Twitter where uh, <clears throat> somebody posted, they worked at, they work at Sephora and they were doing a whole celebratory thing where Sephora just hit like $10 billion in sales in 2023. And they gave all the workers as a reward, a cookie. And on the, on the cookie, it says happy 10 billion. Happy 10 billion. What? Look, how did they not run that by anybody? Like, wait, whose how, idea was that? Out of touch. It, happy $10 billion. Here's a cookie. In like what every, so every Sephora store that's employee terrible. gets a cookie. And that, what's even like funny, like, oh, do you want a cookie? <laughs> like, that's what somebody will say yeah. in yeah. response of like doing well. It's like, better. Oh, what, you want a cookie? Just don't do anything at all. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just don't even mention it. Take them all on a retreat or something. Yeah. And, like, you know, they could too. Like, Give them a nice PR box. Exactly. My, um, so the, my last job, what I used to do was, um, I worked with a lot of companies where they would do good in sales and they'd bring their their uh, the employees out on these trips. And um, like Best Buy, oh, they would take their top yeah. off. 300, 400 salesmen Everybody. and bring them all to <laughs> Miami and they get a full ex like paid trip, hotel, you know, excursions, all that. That's what all these companies should do. It, dude, it, the, the environment they would create where it makes people want to like feel like a family, like that there's, would help so much. There's a lot of companies that do like different things different business or good business or whatever and the way they like treat their employees they'll be like if you want to come in come in if you want to work from home work from home if you want vacation <clears throat> you just want to take the day off do whatever you want like work however you want to work and they notice that everybody's like work ethic and the amount of production they were getting done their sales went up everything went up the employees were happier they were ended up working harder and more having the option to just do whatever they wanted, basically. Mm -hmm. To go off of that, um, so D Danielle's, uh, for Danielle's work, her schedule is pretty much, she only goes into the office from Tuesday to Thursday. Monday and Friday, she gets to work from home, mm -hmm. and that that's her week. And D D uh, Danielle now works so much more. She's yeah. constantly on the computer through, the, like, at night, too. You feel, like, more incentivized. And she, you and feel like you want to work more. She's not even putting overtime. She just, like, works because just because she's in the she's sitting mm -hmm. on the couch she's watching tv i might as well just get all these emails done for the next couple hours yeah but like i feel like just having an environment like that for all your employees where like hey do it on your own time it, it that would make me work harder that'd make me want to get all my shit done because like yeah they're they're taking it so easy on me where i feel like oh i don't want to make them mad right so i'm gonna work harder now yes i'm totally like I think if you if working from home works for you and yeah. that's so beneficial to your lifestyle and you feel like you're more productive doing it, absolutely I, go and I, do it. I'm not productive what's, at home. What freaks me out though is like the real estate business though and all of these office buildings that are not getting filled because people 
are working from home yeah. and like that is like tanking all these yeah. like inve- and I'm not- does it make it bi- does it make a brand look uh worse if there's no like office building attached to it like if you it don't dip- need the office building and people can just work from their computers at home totally depends on the industry <clears throat> and, yeah. and what type of projects you're working on and yeah. like if you genuinely need people you know boots on the ground working yeah. there i mean i'm sure there are roles and positions at companies that require you being there oh like, absolutely yeah 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 um i love the whole do your own schedule type play that they're mm-hmm. doing. And then I, I, I just think it's way different than having like a casual Friday. 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 Yeah, you can wear going. your shirt untucked. Oh, yeah. Did we, anybody ever like get pumped up for that? Yeah, I never I, had a job. I did. When, like when I worked at the, like, at the mall and it like hit. Or no, not at the mall. Sorry. When I worked. Uh, um, for the event people. Like, like I know. never had a casual Friday day, but I couldn't imagine that I would be that excited. We were excited like as kids making... in Catholic school when we would have, dre- we called it dress down day. Mm. I like suit and tie culture though. The, granted though, Don't I understand. You have to, uh, as long as, if you suit and tie culture, I think it would be awesome if your company paid for the damn dry cleaning. I feel bad for yes. people. You have to wear suit and tie. You have to go buy the suits. You have to go buy all this stuff. And that's more expensive. That's a tough lifestyle to keep up with. I just miss the days where you would see mm. like a time lapse of people in New York City walking across the street. With everyone wearing Yes. If you went to a sports game, everyone there's wearing suits because they just came off from work and they're going to the game. I miss that era of yeah. just dress and aesthetic and it's kind of lost, but you know, power to the people. If you're more comfortable, it helps you. You know what? Health. I love too that like business dress aesthetic with the briefcase and the suit. I wish like looking back at like old videos and pictures, people at the airport in like blazers like people used to go to the airport dressed to impress yeah, like yeah. everybody looks shoot now it's like straight up pajamas <laughs> and bringing your own pillow and blanket everybody it, it looks is, like it is it crazy looks how... like a giant slumber party at the airport now <laughs> i hate pajama pants at the fucking airport everybody if you're wearing pajama pants, wear some just sweats but pajama pants i'm like wait wait pajama, straight, wait i'm no, trying to see if i've ever oh, they, oh jam jams like okay, okay, jam okay, okay, okay. like okay. cookie monster pajama oh, pants. I, was thinking, <laughs> yes. that, I was thinking that was the exact ones that i was thinking of i can't stand when people wear actual pajamas get that out of my face i'm disgusted that fabric is you've way got, too thin. You've got women in like sleeping <laughs> moo-moos walking around. I'm like. It is crazy. Like w- when you said slumber party, it made me think of everybody that's just laying down on the floor. Everybody now. Imagine back then in their suit, people laying down on the floor at the airport. <laughs> I, but <clears throat> these days when you do dress <laughs> up, you get you get more taken care of. Oh yeah, of and course. I've like I've noticed that too. Like there was one time where I like dressed a little nicer, and at the front, you they just look at you like, oh okay, and they just and yeah. you feel better. Yeah, I like to dress up for the even airport. schools are very different. I notice kids in school now it's pajama pants mm-hmm. and sweatshirts because I guess there's teachers, no uniform anymore. Teach, if you go to Catholic if you go to private, school, uh, private uh, school, yeah. Uh, uh. But uh, there, a lot of teachers in a lot of schools now, they do a day where like they dress like students and it's always just paja- plaid pajama pants plaid or the pajamas. pattern with the sweatshirt. Like we all used to look forward to going to school to show off an outfit. Yeah. Like it was very different. If you go into your job on an off day to pick up your check in your normal clothes, it, it that looks would, different. That's a weird feeling. Like you feel like you shouldn't be seeing it. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I wanted to I say. I once saw my <laughs> I once saw my hot teacher Miss Atlas outside of school. Shout out to Miss Atlas. My god. She didn't look like the other teachers. <laughs> what do you mean? That. She just didn't look like the other teachers. She just she dressed like she was in school on the days that we had mm-hmm. class and then just outside was just Something else. What's that show with the teacher and the kid? Oh, May December the movie? No, oh. the other one, the um Bad Teacher. The, the teacher. teacher. I mean, this is horrible, but just like she was like a teacher when I was a kid. That, that was Aren't a teacher that I would want to have. That's that that was a teacher I, where I'd have like want to have a secret relationship with. Oh my gosh. During, Are you talking about I Bad know. Teacher? Cameron Diaz? No, no, uh, the teacher. She's the hot. List. You know yeah. Phineas is in that movie? Really? Oh Phineas? my gosh, no I way. love this movie. Like, that's him. Right there, the spiky little... That's him. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. Yeah, he still does look the same, but, yeah, you can tell that's him. Okay, how do you get that role? Being I, a, I just want a small role like child, that. Homeschool child actor, I guess. I, I want to get hit with a dodgeball for a scene. Mm-hmm. Like, that's cool. Yeah, if you lived out in L.A., got a flexible lifestyle, of course you go on some uh, auditions. How, so, how do, you get, how do you get, like, small roles like that? I have a good agent. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't know. There's open castings every day to be like extras and stuff. Oh, I want to do that. I don't, that, but that, that, the whole. It's so much time. Audition. You're gone for like two weeks and you get paid. Well, not, not for like 
um, b- doing extra work. Like you don't really have to like audition for that. You just like if movies, you're the right body type, or they movies gotta, like, need see. extras all the time. Like you could be in the background of stuff, like sitting in a restaurant while other people are like the movies. We had our moment. We had our moment. Mm-hmm. I just want to overact the shit out of it, like in the back in the scene of a. <laughs> And they're like, I'm yes. sorry. It is, cra- it is crazy. Dial it down back there. If you, if you just always like whenever you're watching a movie, look at the extras in the back. Sometimes you can tell that one of them is trying so hard to get like for them to get that screen grab yeah. for, for their own page. They're angled out just a little too much to the camera. A little bit. Like, they're supposed to be talking like this, but like they're clearly just like. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. yeah but everybody wants every. You got to. Yeah, like you, you that's have to. You have that's to. your chance, and for people to believe you. I remember when I did the Rock of Ages, I was over the top trying to like do anything you can, just to get. so like you can like actually see yourself. You know. Yeah. Like you wanna you wanna be able to be like, that's clear. You're that's immortal. You. I think that's so fucking cool. I'd much rather be like, I don't, knowing that I'm in the background of a movie. Yeah. Years from now, that like my grandkids will be like, my grandpa is in this movie, movie yeah. in the background. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. Like, like an iconic movie. Yeah, you're on a an airplane. That, uh, you're on an airplane, and you can like pull yourself up and be like, look, there I yeah. am. Before we continue, we want to give a big thank you to our next sponsor of this podcast, Shopify. Y'all hear that, baby? That is the best kind of notification. It's the sound of another sale on Shopify, and the moment another business dream becomes a reality. Shopify is the commerce platform revolutionizing millions of businesses worldwide. Whether you're selling coffee, you're selling merch, you're selling soaps, you're selling candles, you're selling protein bars. Selling you're se- your soul. Ooh, spooky. <laughs> Shopify. <laughs> Shopify simplifies selling online and in person so you can focus on successfully growing your business. And Shopify covers every sales channel from an in-person POS system to an all-in-one e-commerce platform. It even lets you sell across social media marketplaces like TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. And they're packed with industry-leading tools ready to ignite your growth. Shopify gives you complete control over your business and your brand without having to learn any new skills in design or code, which I know... I'm really bad at. And thanks to 24-7 support and an extensive business course library, Shopify is there to support your success every step of the way. As you guys know, Heath and I have a coffee company and we run the entire thing straight from Shopify. It is literally, it's like... Running a business for dummies, it's like the mm-hmm. easiest side to work off of and everything that you need and just setting it up. Put it this way. If we can figure it out, yeah. <laughs> literally anybody can. You see these big idiots running a whole company through mm-hmm. Shopify. Now it's your turn to get serious about selling and try Shopify today. That's right, baby. That is possibility powered by Shopify. And if you want to sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash unfiltered, all lowercase. One more time so you don't forget, go to shopify.com slash unfiltered to take your business to the next level baby again shopify.com slash unfiltered thank you shopify for sponsoring today's podcast we love you so much and everybody listening right now make your business today right now start don't it. wait did you hear about the the manta ray that is in like an uh aquarium in i believe it's north or south carolina it's been in a tank like by itself the only or it's a stingray it's not a manta ray it's a stingray yeah female stingray hasn't been with another mate in eight years and is suddenly mysteriously pregnant Huh? Mm, and no, they're like, how? they go, how is this stingray pregnant? It, this doesn't make sense because this type of breed, like. The Virgin Mary it's of the, stingrays. Yeah, it's, they, <laughs> you, the just, stingray. you just see a worker get in the tank in the middle. Of- Stop. <laughs> Stop it. I'm, so they have two <laughs> theories. The cameras? They have two theories about how this stingray might be pregnant. There's another tiny, like, I'm talking like little itty bitty, like sh- uh, shark fish kind of thing in there. Okay. And they noticed that there were nips on the stingray's wings and they go, okay, so that means this shark could have potentially impregnated the stingray and that's going to produce a breed that we've never seen. Whoa. Sorry. Or real quick, just so I can understand the biology. Yeah. Stingrays give live birth. Um, I don't know if they lay eggs. I bet they lay eggs because it's a fish that has gills. So. Like sharks so, lay eggs. What? I think they're seeing each other. I, they look pretty intimate in that picture. So, oh, guys, I thought it, it's a bee. Oh, I like thought, it, they shoot out. Oh, they don't lay eggs. Oh, sorry. They give milk. He, well, you learn something every he, day. I thought this was a full size ma- uh, a manta ray, what, stingray. stingray, and a full size shark. In my head, gray white. Oh no no no! That was, <laughs> that was in my head. That's why I was like, what? So wait, I didn't think babies could 
have uh, intercourse like that? And I don't they have to be a certain age? Well, period. So, when was their period? So what the, then it's also crazy. They may <laughs> think that this uh, it's happened in some species. I think it's called like parthenogenesis, and that's like the ability to reproduce without having a mate, which is like whoa, also crazy. But they've never seen parthenogenesis in this species of stingrays. So so it's possible to humans though, right? Because uh, of Virgin Mary. Because of God. But God mixed with pano, pan, panorama, panorama gene, uh, genesis. Exactly. It's just wild. After eight years, suddenly this stingray is like, I'm going to give birth. What, what if someone just was over the tank one day and just... Zane, enough. Little, just think about it. it think about it. I mean, there's, it there's, weirdo, there's weirdos out there. It's like, different. You can't have like a. You can't crossbreed a human and a stingray. Yeah, no. But, but who imagine thought, who thought they could crossbreed. A imagine if you could, though. Imagine the controversies. Like you're going in to give birth, and like a half horse comes out. Does it's it like, have rights? Can it vote? Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, but like imagine have the look vote. on the face of everybody. Like you just exposed yourself to doing some. Bizarre stuff. Oh, yeah. Jail. Jail. <laughs> like, imagine it comes out and it's half animal. Bestiality is illegal, right? Yes. Like, fully yes. illegal. Yes. Okay. Unless you're in Amsterdam. <laughs> it's, like, it's not illegal, right? Like, the video that came out with the, the one guy, remember that one? The one guy, one horse? Okay. Yeah. That he went to jail for that? I don't know. Because you, you, you can see his face in it, no? It, sorry to correct me. Sorry for the people of Amsterdam. I don't think that there's the... But I know that I think down in like Mexico or South America, you, there's like shows Ooh. where you can go watch somebody get no. fucked by a keep, horse. Keep, keep hitting different country, Matt. It's just every country he's listing. Yeah. And you know what? I think R Russia and Sweden. China, Korea... I know it exists. <laughs> I just... Sorry I said Amsterdam. Um, but That's fine. I don't think Amsterdam people would get upset. I think there's like just sex shows in Amsterdam. With an, with with animals, no. Just Experts say humans. it's impossible for a shark to impregnate a stingray. Okay, I guess we'll find out. Yeah, I guess we'll find out. So they're gonna do like a live. A, I don't like know. Like a live stream it. Like th we have to see this. So we. They Why can't, is the stingray alone? Right. We have more important questions here. Yeah. No, well, I, think I thought you said a. Sh I thought you said a shark was in there. Uh yes, there, yes, but, but lone like, stingray, a lone stingray, and it's been in there for eight oh. years. I don't know. Maybe stingrays are competitive; they can get in fights. You don't want like to have mm. them just killing each other. There's yeah. all different types. Her of name's Charlotte. Oh, Charlotte! Shout out to Charlotte. The answer lies in Charlotte. Do you know what movie that's from? No, National Treasure. Great movie. The answer lies in Nicholas Cage. Mm. Do you guys like Nicholas Cage? Uh, I do. I, I think he gets too much shit. I think he's a great guy. I think I think he's I good. think Nicolas Cage is the equivalent to Nickelback. How no. dare you, Nic Nicolas Cage? He, no, does I'm good movies. No, Nickelback I know, is but Nicolas another. Cage gets shit, but Nickelback also gets shit, and they make some really good music. They get more shit than they should. He, I get, they they I have get one. That. They have one good song. Nickelback. Dude, look at this crap. Also, this is how. Yes. Hey, hey. I want to be, be a rock star. Such a good That's song. Nickelback? Yeah. Dude, they have they have a lot of good songs. It's the same structure. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying, just, though. Just they're, get, they're both memes. Yes. But they're talented. Yes. Yeah, I get it. Get help. Get help. Get help. Stop it. Um, but yes, I think they're the equivalent of music and actor. And also, Nicolas Cage looks like he could be the lead singer of Nickelback. I get that. <laughs> It's like people say, like, eight is the same as brown or whatever yeah. people say. Yeah, like Ryo. I get what you're saying. Wow. And brown is also Thursday. Brown is Thursday. That's true. That makes sense. I can Science see Science is yellow. Yeah. I think seven is Thursday. Uh, no, seven's like Sunday. Oh, yeah, because it's the seventh day, I Spanish, guess. Spanish, red. <gasps> Spanish is red. That's mm -hmm. good. Oh, have, you all seen, have you all seen how bad Wendy Williams is? Have you who, seen the, who is that again? Oh, Williams? no, I didn't see the documentary. Oh, no, no, you haven't yes. seen like clips on TikTok? No. TikTok always just, I don't know, it's always showing me William, Wendy Williams stuff, yeah. but it's it's sad. She's at such a peak of like being loved, but like she's not there anymore. It, it's really sad just seeing these like incredible like actors and, you know, people that are in the industry mm -hmm. just like getting so old and they're just not able to perform anymore because mm -hmm. like, uh, what's, what's it? Um, Bruce what's the guy from uh, Fast and Furious? W yeah. What's his name? Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis. Oh. Just not so Fast and the Furious. Not fast and <laughs> oh yeah. I, it was one of those movies. Dead and Alive. Die Hard? <laughs> Die Hard. <laughs> <laughs> Dead and Alive. Dead and Alive. Dead and Alive. 
Damn. But apparently the Wendy Williams, like, financially, like, her estate isn't doing very well. So, like, she needs to make money. So, in a way. But, like, is it helping her or is it helping everyone else around her? Yeah. But it's kind of entertaining because she's, like, talking to her assistant. And her assistant's talking. She's like, I wish you would get liposuction. <laughs> but, but, but the hair. The hair is everything. And the assistant is like, thank mm. you. Um, okay. <laughs> did, did, you guys see the, did you guys see the clip of j of J Lo <laughs> behind this, like it was like it looked like it was like a documentary was being filmed. And I, at first, I it thought it is a documentary. The BTS behind her big movie, her big movie out. that just came out, and it's just a compilation. It's 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 the video. It's a compilation of all pretty much all her friends and like big actors all just saying no to being in this movie, oh. and she's just getting flustered. Their assistants like Jason Momoa said no, Tom Cruise said no, like. <laughs> and Someone commented on that clip was like me inviting people to my party, <laughs> dude. It, it was just I was just so surprised she saw that. I was just like, let people see this. I, it was just it it just it, it was really like sad. It's sad and embarrassing. Like it just what it, it seemed like everybody was saying no because nobody just wanted to be a part of any project that she was doing. Mm. Because no one also and, wanted. She had to put twenty million dollars of her own money into making that that movie. She basically yeah. made like uh she put out a new album and then right. made. A twenty million dollar heavily CGI movie that's like a you know how would I describe it like a thriller like a oh like a it's purple the one that rain just kind of movie and, you know, and I respect her vision uh, I re prime I respect her vision she had this vision right like it was it, it was a little it was out of the out of the ordinary but like you could tell like her heart and soul was into it and I appreciated that because you know whenever that's I feel like I want to do us something asking for guests to come on this show <laughs> every. <laughs> I'm just so over like J Lo though she's like this is me now new songs I'm still like here I'm still relevant like there's a level of when you become a pop star you have your catalog of music go take a Vegas residency people want to see that you're new and they looked at the numbers of her it's new really J Lo album it's like some of her songs only have forty thousand listens like mm. her new not, ones yeah no one's listening to this new stuff you're not going to be on the radio like with yeah. these hits J Lo go focus on Probably the acting and doing residency, playing the hits for people. You're now, what is she, 50 something? Mm -hmm. All res I mean, I'll respect her, but there's just this level where she's like, I still have it, I still have it, I still have it. Yeah. I'm like, chill. Yeah, I think maybe she's just like trying to, like, for her, that's just fun. Like, new projects. It makes her feel. Um, I'm not going to say anything because I feel like I'm going to be 50 and being like, we need to come out with a new podcast set. <laughs> <laughs> we need to keep recording. So I, I don't. 12. We need to keep recording. <laughs> I, you know what? If you want to keep doing it, do your thing. I mean, do you think it's going to be like tougher to get into this room and then record it in like eight it will years? Be naturals. I think it's going to be so fun. Look at Howard Stern. Yeah. I think it's going to be so fun. I could do this twelve hours a day. Especially, I'll, like, I'll, I'll, I'll be go I'm going to be gone. Especially once we all gone. have kids, it's going to be so funny telling like stories about the kids and everything. Like, huh? <laughs> That's going to be me. Ah, uh -huh. I just had no idea what's happening around me. <laughs> Jennifer Coolidge said no. Lizzo said no. Um, Jordan, yeah. could could you grab me a squirt, please? Do you remember like the squirt girl? She would have like a headband. She'd be in the squirt commercials, yeah. like dancing on a. I, boat. She she made it pop. She made the drink pop off. Bubba, careful <laughs> googling that. <one>. I put <laughs> drink. Yeah. Squirt squirt girl. Zane, are you like a model now? <laughs> oh, dude, your pair of thieves pictures were amazing. I, it was great. I just. Everybody thought it was AI. No. Crazy. It, it, the, the, when I looked, Heath, as soon as I posted it, I really looked at it. I was like, it just looks like it looks like AI. I did, it didn't give AI to me. It, it did to me. The thing is, when you're shooting on those type of cameras, like a medium format film camera, it already has this very... Um, the pictures that I posted were digital, I think. It still looked medium format. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I but think you could also tell an AI prop make it look like medium form. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't I don't think it looked like um AI. I just think they looked really clean. Like they were just like very perfect. Yeah. Almost like a like a magazine shoot ad type yeah. thing. Yeah. It, it was just looked really professional. Yeah, it, it was like the first time I actually felt good about like as soon as it, it was taken, I was like, oh, keep going, keep going. Like yeah. I picked like 
50 images from that batch. And normally when me and you do a shoot, two. we take like one or two yeah. out of like the thousands that we take. But yeah, I guys, I did like a, a pair of thieves, like underwear shoe. Cause they put me as part of their campaign for their new fitness, like cool underwear. It was so Love sick. Underwear. Huge thanks to them um, for just giving me a chance to do that. It was really awesome. Did uh, you have fun? Like, do you like that world? Is this motivating to like, Stay in shape and still do it. Uh, yeah, be in your daddy's footsteps. Yeah, uh, like the pic- now you have pictures of you and your dad side by side to like show your kids. Yeah, no, that was that was really cool. Like my dad and my mom both called me right after the doc came out. They were so proud of me. They were really happy. My dad was super happy with me. I thought he was. Gonna, I thought he was going to be pissed. Because of the video, because of all the, oh, the, the really? drinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. When you when you see something like that in a compilation all together. It really it, puts it, it in perspective. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's really hard to watch, especially like mm-hmm. my dad watching that. I was really worried about that. He called me and I actually didn't want to pick up because I was just way too scared. You I didn't know it was going to be like reprimanding I didn't know if he was going to yell at me. It's it haramful. Just, yeah, it, like <laughs> Hidayah was in there. I was just really worried about it. Just like, yeah. just see, putting the two of Hidayah and that together was like probably really hard to digest. But no, he was like really proud of me. He's like, I'm really glad that you like got out of that mostly and like you're bettering yourself. I'm like, that's amazing. Perfect. Before we continue, we want to give a big thank you to our next sponsor of this podcast, Rocket Money. Heath, before Rocket Money, how many apps were you paying for? Honestly, that I, you did not know you were paying for for years. That's years. the thing. I couldn't tell you. And that's what's great about Rocket Money is because most people don't know. They don't know because they they forget about it. They sign up for something, you know, years ago and they just keep getting billed and they don't see it on their statements. And Rocket Money even gets those apps that delete on its own or Mm -hmm. if if an app decides to shut down and you're still paying monthly for it because they still do that. They can still do that. They even cancel those because you won't even see, you won't even see it on your phone anymore. And that's how they get you. Exactly. And with Rocket Money, we have full control over our subscriptions and get a clear view of the expenses. Exactly. You see all your subscriptions in one place. And if you see something you don't want, Rocket Money can help you cancel it with a few taps. And the best part is that the dashboard shows everything that I'm spending this month compared to last month. So I can clearly see my spending habits. Plus, they can even help you create a custom budget and keep your spending on track. Rocket Money will even try to negotiate and lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is submit a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. They'll deal with the customer service for you. And if you're still confused, Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills so that you can grow your savings. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of $500 million in canceled subscriptions, which is crazy. Which has saved its members up to $740 a year when using all of the app's features. So stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash unfiltered. Again, that's rocketmoney.com slash unfiltered. One more time so you do not forget again, rocketmoney.com slash unfiltered. Thank you so much, Rocket Money, for sponsoring today's podcast. We love you so much, and thank you for saving all of us money. But yeah, I could fill you in real quick. I just had a, a checkup on my eye. Yeah. And my growth is back. <sighs> so I just can't believe, I can't believe how quick that was. I know. Wait, what, like when, what day, like how long ago exactly was you? It's been a month and a week. A month? I think since I got it done. Was he surprised how quick I, I came I think back? so. He was. I think so. So with This they, time it's not in front of your pupil like it was before. Yeah, it's. So does um, he suggest just leave it? He said he wants to see it again in like three months um, to see. But you don't notice it like you noticed it the other time. No. So right now. That's good. That's that's good. That's better. He said it's 40% of the size of when he removed it. Okay. Because my last checkup a month ago, I didn't have anything. Yeah. And now I already have this. So he that wants to so see weird. in three months if it keeps growing. The cells uh, growing, that's it's not like damaging anything, right? They're just, it's just there. Like, it's not like. Going into your optic nerve. Yeah, it's Yeah, it's not like. um. So hurting you or damaging anything in your eye? No, it's just affecting the vision. That's it. Yeah. Okay. And some people were saying that like they can like eat through the cornea sometimes. That's, that's, that's yeah. Um, problem. So we'll see. I'm, I'm trying like not to get worked up because yeah, last, no. last time I was really, really um, upset. Uh, but I'm just going to wait the three months, do the checkup, see if it needs to be removed again. Right. Oh, th- uh, oh in three months? He wants yeah. you to come back? Don't worry. Yeah. It is what it is. At least it's not, like, noticeable to you as yeah. last time. Like, it was really bothering you. Yeah. 
now it's like you don't feel it doesn't it's not obstructing your view or anything oh that's oh you don't feel or see it right now <laughs> no so basically like the growth inside puts a gap in your cornea and like pushes it out so it would be like if you were like to put a pair of glasses in front of your eye, like you would be able to see clear. But if you turned the glasses, like it's going to like make your vision seem kind of like fun. Yeah. Does that Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes total sense. Like instead could, of looking through it straight, it would be like. Yeah. Could, could of, they ever clean it again and then stitch like the hole so nothing gets back in? And it's a way of like really sealing so, the so gap. So they don't really do the stitch on because I just have like that smile little incision. Yeah. If they did the whole pull the flat back. Oh, right. But the reason he didn't want to do it is because right now having smile, I can get LASIK in the future. Okay. But if he was to do the flap, then you can't really, like, you, he yeah. wouldn't recommend doing he, LASIK. He also, the, the doctor does not know, I believe, that you told me, the doctor does not know if it was, um, he left something in there from sc just scraping or one cell just, like, happened to make its way in right, there. Right, if, he if doesn't one know. little cell is underneath there... It grows and multiplies, like the cell like reproduces, and that's why the that's mass keeps growing. That's probably what happened, because you so, can't see a cell with right. So right? he like one. you try to clean it out as much <laughs> as you can, but even if one little one is stuck under there, damn epithelial like, cells. Yes, yeah. and just but. and just know just now knowing how tiny it could be, yeah. it could be either he left it or it just swam its way into the yeah. little sliver. So that's the update. You have a little uh, stingray who reproduces on its own. Yeah, she's in there doing it. Little and stingray your eyes eggs. Are the aquarium. That's cute. I like. love the way this just ties in stories <laughs> together. Just mm. come full circle. Aww. You let me know if that doctor leaves another cell in your eye again. Mm. I know. I'm not gonna see though. Thank you. <laughs> I'll give him a cell in his eye. <laughs> Tomorrow's a leap. You're gonna end day. up in a cell. <laughs> what? Tomorrow's a leap day. Oh, oh yeah! I always feel like we, like people should have parties for a leap day. Yeah, I think it's like it's so rare like that like a memorial day. Yeah, yeah. go to a trampoline party. something. <laughs> having a a leap day party. Yeah, if it's a, yeah, falls it on seems a good day. more exciting than a new year because this is only once every four years. True. You, you know what? What tomorrow should be leap year days? The purge. <gasps> yeah, right. the purge because it's like be a cool. day that does not exist. It doesn't exist. So there's no, no law. Rules. And what day did this happen on? Uh, February 29th. Mm. Mm. Doesn't mm. exist. The mm. Mm. What a scary thought. <gasps> it does seem. I'm not gonna sound like an idiot. It's why it does seem possible in the future. I don't know why. The purge. Yeah. Because it's not up to us. I could see it in like it's a up different to just a country. People. I don't think it would happen in the United States. Of the thing is, it's up to the the population to decide. Because if everybody was on board there's not enough room in prison there's not enough time for all these cases there's not enough you know what i mean like if everybody decided to do they can't lock everybody up they can't they literally could not do anything. it it is crazy to think about how we, there's so much of us Baby, if we were we all the just people. if we were just all on the same page for something that is catastrophic. Like, don't pay taxes. Yes. <laughs> Just don't do it. <laughs> Just don't do it. Just don't do it. <laughs> we need to pay for schools. Yeah, right? No, the billionaires got it. Certain yeah. certain taxes need to go away. Yeah, like, let's, let's not get greedy. Let's not get crazy. Mm. We get it. I don't want to pay taxes on, on, my, on my... No sales tax, you're saying? Sales tax I'm fine with. Um... The social security tax needs to go away. That's the biggest scam. That is the biggest scam. Um, just money that's just like being taken out without your... Because they think we're not smart enough to invest our own money. And then when you finally get to retirement age, you'll never be able to collect it all. Yeah. And then they just keep it. And they know just some people just never even make it to that age. Yeah. So it just goes right into their pocket. Yeah. Scam. It's Animal, not... Animals don't pay. That's right. Damn, anything. lucky, but they also... Churches don't and pay. And they're smarter than us. They also can't talk to anybody. That would suck. Imagine you like really wanted like... I don't know, like a cookie one day, and you're just an animal. You're not going to be able to fucking get it. Who was it, cool. Kiki Palmer? They were like, if you could come back in a different life as something else, what would it be? She's like, I come back as a rock. I feel <laughs> a like they rock? Really, they really got it going on. They're just the solid. <laughs> what were we, t we were talking about tax? We're talking about taxidermy. Oh, animals. Taxidermy is a pretty crazy one. Because the first person <laughs> that decided to do it that had to be, to be sick. one sick in the head. Also, two, like... What do you? What do you no, mean? No, no. Think about it. No, the, like back then, you have the, the people that are like cavemen. They were using it as like a coat because it no. get cold. Well, that's like the that's, fur. That's just 
utilizing parts of the animal for other things. Taxidermy is literally stuffing that animal. But but, but it, it, it comes from that. I feel like it's it's not far off. I think it's come from for trophy hunting, though. People would kill something out of sport for fun, and they wanted to have it back as a trophy to be like, look right? what I killed. Or animal, like, like, a, like a pet you can get taxidermy on. Right. It's just a very bizarre concept. To just fully stuff, uh, like fully stuff a whole animal. Yeah. What about like a taxi? So would you ever like? Would you ever taxidermy? Because I know that you've hunted like occasionally. Would you ever taxidermy like the the head of a deer? The only thing I would never, I I couldn't shoot a deer. Okay. Um, I've only killed two animals, but I ate them, and it was two quail. Oh, that's not that bad. Um, I killed a squirrel. Owl. <laughs> This shit tasted awful. I felt so bad. You killed a squirrel. I felt so yeah, yeah. Squirrel. Because well, because I I was a kid and they're like go go and that was like the only thing in my in my like in my peripheral. So I shot it and I was like woo and they're like you have to eat it now, Zane. Ugh. There's no and way. That's where how were you? Yeah, yeah, I had to eat it. You were at like proper hunting. Yeah, you yeah, were yeah, like North, with the BB no, no, gun. No, no, it was just my backyard. Backyard. Uh, backyard. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was in North Carolina. Like. Uh, with my family visiting, and you got they, peer we'd go pressured hunting. into eating a squirrel. They just didn't. That was the rule, but they just didn't tell me after I did it. Mm. I think that they. I think they liked. And it, oh like, that, was it barbecued? Was it? Yeah, they cooked it. They cooked it, and they put it in front of me. It wasn't like a evil thing that they did. It, it's definitely it's edible. Yeah, yeah. Like you can eat it. I just, my, my the taste was not squirrels. good. But doves, doves are interesting. I don't think I could eat that. I heard they're delicious though. D- Heath, delicious. It tastes like it, like Panda Express chicken. Stop. <laughs> Panda uh, Express chicken. It, no, like it, it's just so it's Isn't so it like sweet, sweet and soft? without having any sauce in it. No. It's just sweet chicken and just it's our new backyard. The only bird back there are doves. Don't let Zane Covered come. In doves. The, oh, they'll be gone real oh, quick. G- give me your salt gun. I'll just I love morning doves. Um, make a little sweet and sour chicken. Stop it. You know, it's another weird thing. I. Just because I look at, you know, food preparation, if things go down, like growing your own fruits, veggies, things like that. Um, apparently, the best animal to have is bunny rabbits I've had for, one. like, meat because of how quickly they reproduce and grow to a full size. Did we talk about this last episode? No. Yeah. Oh, wow. This is so Go on. But, yeah, so bunny is, a like, a great source of meat to have as like a like a meat farm or better than having chickens better like, than having more chickens. like a better like apocalyptic like livestock to have on you yeah if you it was like the end of days and you needed to and have food. people were saying like it's a the best for that but it's the hardest because you have to kill a bunny kill a bunny and yeah that's yeah that's horrible but would you keep mm. one I, I would I would the be the person one. to be like okay let's set this up and then not be able to ever harvest them yeah because they're they're all of them so just being so cute playing with each other humping they're each other really sweet yeah but I'm for the if you shoot it you have to eat it so I yeah I, I, no I I respect I, I, I respected that like for for eating the squirrel absolutely no no I I knew I had to I mean I didn't want to but I was definitely forced to I've I had rabbit to. I've had rabbit. But I was How in, is it? I was in Australia at a really nice restaurant. Yeah, no, and I, I, and I was like thirteen, no. and I was like, "Hey, you only live once," and I had it. It was, I felt it. It was all right. It was all right. It was like chicken, but I felt like you know, like the way like salmon is, like how it has like a lot of like layers to it. Mm. For me, I felt like it was a very like layered like meat, or it was kind of flaky. But flaky, that's what I remember. Buttery. I saw eating you eat it. it again though. On your close, <laughs> no, I did on your close friends. Oh yeah, you're, you're hanging upside down with the feet. I think you promised. You promised. <laughs> you remember when everybody used to have bunny feet on their keychain? Yeah, yeah, yeah old rabbit foot. Mm, rabbit Wait, what? Foot. A lucky yeah. rabbit foot. I remember I wanted fur- one so yeah. bad. Wait, was it? It was the hot a, thing back in was like it elementary school. To mine? It's just a little t- it, little keychain. Yeah. Wait, it was real? Yes. Well, I also used to have a crocodile foot like on a necklace. Everybody had that, 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 that crocodile claw. Yeah. Why? Oh, that's yeah. You don't remember evil. seeing those everywhere? Yeah. Oh. Or would, like, wasn't there also it? like a raccoon tail? <laughs> yeah. 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 Like a Davy Crockett kind of like. Oh my God. I forgot the squirrel that I killed. They skinned it and made it a thing. And it was in my bedroom for a year. <laughs> what? Dang. Do you remember that? <laughs> oh. <laughs> hanging in my room. It smelled. It smelled. It smelled so there's bad. No, there's no way. It was in my room hanging. You, you don't. You don't ever. I don't remember it. Did you like it? No, I hated it. <laughs> it's hanging it smelled from his, so bad. Like from his fan. <laughs> <laughs> mm, those are cute though. That reminds me of like the scene days. 
with yeah. with little coontails. Yeah, the hats are really cool. Yeah, little Dave. Was it Davy Crockett who mm-hmm. wore that hat? That's like Met Gala shit right there. Look at that. What's the theme this year? Wildlife, <laughs> <laughs> furries. What's you guys' thoughts on like bear rugs? Um, oh, this bear rugs. Good. Like, is the head still yeah. on the rug? Um, w- w- did you kill it yourself? It, it's wild that that's the only animal I feel they do that with. Like cowhide rug. Imagine seeing a cow head sitting there. You would be like, "What the? That's f-? true, dude." Yeah. There what? was a kid I knew at. UT and I, he had these like rich grandparents who had a house like off campus and we would go to this mansion. He had a white, his grandparents had a white tiger fur rug with the whole head on the tiger in the house. Real. Like I'm I've like, seen those in you movies. Killed a white tiger. I'm like, this is the most like illegal, like gangster shit I've <laughs> ever fucking seen. Wow. I, and he was like, yeah, like my grandfather killed it and whatnot. And it was just at some point, insane. like animals are so like, I know somebody like in the friends, like my family friends circle, he was like a big game hunter and he had animals that like, you just don't, he had a giraffe, man. That's sad. Like you are, why would you ever kill a giraffe? It's not like you're hunting it and it's like, it's, Right. No, that's, bro, it's sitting. Yeah, the, the um, that's poaching. The, the, what you're poaching. saying, the giraffe. I went to. Uh, I had to work at this house that was on Star Island in Miami. Yeah, in Star Island, where it's like all okay. those insane. rich celebrities live there. There was one house I was working at. He had an a, a, a entire taxidermized Why? giraffe on the staircase. I, it was unbelievable. It and was like crazy. I on this staircase, I remember it was like it. hang the head going over the staircase. It was crazy. I remember seeing it and being so sad. I'm like this. It's a giraffe. It's not like a predator that's i don't know and also to make that like your interior decision in your home like is such a bold move like you gotta hope that like every guest who come over is like nice. yeah giraffe because people are be coming over cool and remembering giraffe. that and, yeah like, it's honestly it's it's like just seeing even that tiger like skinned like that on the floor it i can't look I, it back up it's like too, too that sad. to me like that to me i agree with PETA in certain <laughs> things yeah. where i'm just like that is really hard to look at. Cool. Just like an animal skin, just to lay, lay on the floor for your own enjoyment to walk over. That's it. He also had it's like- It's crazy. Every, the whole house was like this and they were in stations and the taxidermy he had done was, I'll say cool, but when you like think about it, like he had like rock shelves coming off with like white mountain goats, like- perched up like walking like around. Does he live in a Cabela's? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Literally like that. Do they and do that at Bass Pro Shops? Do they yeah. have taxidermized? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. oh, it's Cabela's. all over. Yeah. yeah. Um, like, obviously, like, the positions were cool and it felt like they were, like, walking right there, but it's like, you literally killed... I don't know. You know, it is a little just, strange. Just, like, you pay a huge check. So much of it is just, go. like, culture and reference point. They grew up with probably a family that was just, like, their dad told them, like, when you get get one of these you gotta stuff it yeah. you gotta be proud of it for the rest of your life it's it's crazy how many friends we have back home like i'll just be scrolling through instagram and you just like <laughs> still see them the fucking yeah. gator mouth open like this and <laughs> yeah i still see that on my feet <laughs> that, yeah. that would give me the ick all the time <laughs> You're looking at him. You supposed to. Like I went duck. You did I, not do an alligator. No, no, no. I think he would do like fish. I think it was like different fish. But I, right? I was always catch and release. Yeah, but they were dead. They didn't die. I went I duck. Bring hunt. them home. I went duck hunting though in Alabama, like over Christmas break. I didn't have the gun. I didn't shoot. But I was like, a couple guys were going, and they invited me. I'm like, well, if it's gonna happen, I want to go just watch it yeah. go down. You were supporting. You were guilty by association. I was just chilling with the dog. You know, <laughs> no, I, I just sat there and just watched it all go down. They only killed like two dogs. Did they eat it? Um, I don't know. I think one of the guys who was like the head dudes took him back and I don't know what he did with it. He probably ate it or something. But, do you do you know what buck fever is? Um, no. When like the like when it's mating season? No. So buck fever is the feeling that you get when you shoot your first buck. Oh, and people post their reactions like to it all the time. They'll film themselves like having buck fever. And it's such a weird concept to me because all of the people are like, that's it, man. That's the buck fever. You're hooked. And it's these people like shaking and crying and like hyperventilating. It's like my mom had buck fever that day we were doing disc shooting. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That she was, was just that getting was, a trigger happen. That was I, I got I got footage of my mom like that was buck fever right there. She shot that shot, she hit it, it literally 
like it was just a through back the back of her spine. I don't know, maybe because I've never done it, I've never had it. But to me, what it appears as, like, just guilt. Oh, it's a place of guilt. It's not. It's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be like this exciting. I thought thing, it's like, like a primitive like, rush because yes, you it, have conquered right getting the meal nervous excitement yeah Yeah. that to me that's what i thought that's what everybody like says like buck fever like it's a a primal feeling like you just killed an animal it's this like emotional thing i think as a human it feels wrong because they didn't do anything yeah Yeah. like they weren't coming at you they're just standing there eating yeah so like i think automatically you're just gonna feel this rush of guilt and then you're like but i did it but it looks the same as when people would (laughs) murder somebody Right. It's that like shaky, like, like you just took a life. I don't mm-hmm. know. I don't know if it's specifically like this primal thing of like, you just, you know. You see, for me, that conquered. squirrel was like going to attack me. <laughs> so I had to shoot it. I was in fear of my life. Because that squirrel I also, had rabies. I felt bad when I shot those two <laughs> birds and I got like really emotional and worked up. Not for the sake of like, I'm a provider. I'm a hunter gatherer. Yeah. And I just, it was like, oh my God, I just took a life right yeah, now. You're like a- you blindsided them. Yeah, like they didn't see it coming. You're an you're an empath. I got them with one shot though. That was you got them with one shot, but they also could have been just killed, eaten alive by another predator as right. well. They could have been robot like birds, a mountain lion. They could have been just like engineered birds, spies. Yeah. What if you t- took down like a Russian? And I bird? found a GoPro in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> wild. Um, but yeah, that was my thoughts. On All right, awesome. Are we done? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. Um, yeah, we should because it's three twenty. We got to do the unwind and then we have the call at four. Oh, fuck. Okay. Yes. Um, um. All right, go hit it. How about you hit it? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning into another episode of Unfiltered. You can check out these episodes every Monday, audio form on all the podcast platforms, and you check out these episodes every Tuesday on our YouTube channel, youtubecom slash Zane and Heath. That's right, baby. We also have a Patreon, patreoncom slash Zane and Heath. We do a bonus episode every single month. We do a live Q and A every month, uh, behind the scenes content. We got like a little Discord where you can hang out and talk. We also keep these cameras rolling for another like twenty minutes. You get an extended version of the podcast, and um, now we'll be posting more underwear pictures. On oh. Too, so um, we actually have a episode up right now if you haven't seen it yet uh it's when zane came in here face half melted off and high out of his mind after getting his tooth removed and i um, loved it so that episode is live right now if you want to check that out too patreon.com slash zane and he uh um, all right that's it folks all right we'll see you soon bye Bye. Ciao. Ciao.